As you know from viewing other videos in this series, there are many terms and acronyms used in the administration of the National Flood Insurance Program, or NFIP. Many of these terms are meant to express notions of flood risk. In this video, we will explain the terms and acronyms used in the NFIP that are most critical for understanding concepts of flood risk and explain the limitations in the ability of flood studies and mapping to express the real risks faced by property owners. These key terms and acronyms will be used during this presentation. You can find the terms and their definitions at the web address on screen. Rivers, streams, and lakes are expected to flood. As a result, all bodies of water have floodplains. As we discussed in Video 7, however, many factors affect the depth, duration, and frequency of flooding for any given water body. Because of this, the same amount of rain falling over the same period of time in two different watersheds is likely to result in very different flood events. FEMA's Federal Insurance and Mitigation Administration is charged with identifying flood-prone areas in the United States and establishing ways to quantify the actual risk of flooding within those flood-prone areas. Studies are conducted to estimate the inundation areas for both relatively common and less frequent flood events for the same water body. The most commonly referenced representation of risk in the NFIP is the concept of the 100-year flood. The 100-year flood is the flood that, based on statistical probabilities, has a 1 out of 100 chance of occurring or being exceeded in any given year. Unfortunately, the term 100-year flood is too often interpreted to be a prediction that such a flood could only happen once every 100 years, when in fact it is meant to express the probability of the flood occurring. The 100-year flood is also referred to as the 1% chance flood, which is a more appropriate description of the risk of such a flood occurring in any given year. A river could experience a 100-year flood twice in the same year, three times in 10 years, or only once over the course of 250 years. The table on screen helps explain the concepts of flood probability and risk. For example, the table shows that while there is a 1% chance of a 100-year flood occurring in any given year, there is an 18% chance that such a flood will occur within any given 20-year period, and a 26% chance that such a flood will occur during the life of a 30-year mortgage. In order to develop a common standard for the entire country, the NFIP adopted the 1% chance flood as the base flood for both insurance rating and regulation purposes. The choice of the 1% chance flood was a compromise between using a smaller flood event, say a 10% chance flood which would leave many properties exposed to more frequent damage by flood, and a larger, less frequent flood event such as a 0.1% or 1,000-year flood which was considered to be too stringent and an unreasonable requirement for most types of development. FEMA refers to the area inundated by the base flood as the Special Flood Hazard Area, or SFHA. The NFIP defines the base flood elevation, or BFE, as the elevation that floodwaters would reach at a particular location during the base flood. The methods for determining the base flood, the Special Flood Hazard Area, and the flood mapping process in general will be discussed in greater detail in Video 9 in this series. The table on screen shows the relationship between the different terms used by the NFIP to describe the same concepts. From this point forward, the term base flood will be used to reference the concept of the 100-year and 1% chance flood, and the term Special Flood Hazard Area, or SFHA, will be used to reference the 100-year floodplain. For regulatory purposes, a community's floodplain management ordinance and the state of Iowa require development permits for most types of development located in the Special Flood Hazard Area. Regulatory requirements will be discussed in greater detail in later videos. The placement of development in the floodplain results in an obstruction of flood flows and an increase in flood stages, which in turn results in higher flood damages. However, 
It is possible to minimize the increase in flood stages by reserving a portion of the floodplain for the conveyance of flood flows. The floodway consists of those portions of the floodplain, including the stream channel, that are reasonably required to carry the base flood event, so that restricting the flow will not result in a significant increase in flood stage. The floodway is determined using a hydraulic model that proportionately reduces flow on both sides of the channel until it shows a one-foot increase in the base flood elevation. Because the floodway includes those areas closest to the channel, it is also the part of the floodplain where flow depths are deepest and velocities are greatest. And so, it is usually the most dangerous part of the floodplain. It is important to recognize the limitations of the flood study and mapping process in assessing and understanding the real flood risk for any individual property. Flood studies and the mapping process are good at capturing many of the factors that influence the depth and duration of flooding, but they are not perfect and are limited by the quality and detail of the data and methods used in the analysis. It is also important to remember that the special flood hazard area shown on a firm only represents the area at risk for a specific flood event, the base flood. This should not be interpreted as meaning that areas located just outside the special flood hazard area are not also at some risk to damage by flood. Flood events larger than the base flood, such as the 200-year and 500-year events, do occur. So while it may be true that properties located outside the special flood hazard area may have a lower risk of damage by flood, they should not be considered to be without risk. Today, you have learned more about the terms and acronyms used in the NFIP that are most critical for understanding concepts of flood risk and limitations of flood studies and mapping to express the real risks faced by property owners.